when the night was won. The tale of the merchant with the goblin. She said, It has reached me, O happy king, that there was a merchant who had a lot of money and transactions in the country. He rode one day and went out to demand in some country, but the heat became intense for him, so he sat under a tree and put his hand in his stall bag, and ate a piece of bread that he had with him and a date. When he finished eating, the date threw the stone, and he saw a tall goblin with a sword in his hand. He approached that merchant and said to him, Get up so that I can kill you just as you killed my son. The merchant said to him, How did I kill your son? He said to him, When you ate the date and threw away its pit, the pit came into my son's chest and he was killed and died immediately. The merchant said to the Ifrit, No, O Ifrit, that I am in debt, and I have a lot of money, children, and a wife, and I have mortgages, so let me go to my house and give everyone his right, and then I will return to you, and I have a covenant and covenant with you that I will return to you, so do with me what you want, and God is what you will. I say agent. So the genie trusted him and released him, so he returned to his country, settled all his ties, conveyed the rights to their families, and informed his wife and children of what had happened to him, and they cried, as did all his family, wives, and children. He made a will and stayed with them until the year was completed, then he went and took his shroud under his armpit, and bid farewell to his family, neighbors, and all of them. His family, and he left against his will, and they started crying and screaming at him, so he walked until he reached that orchard, and that day was the first of the new year, and while he was sitting and crying about what was happening to him, an old old man came to him, carrying a chained deer, so he greeted this merchant. He greeted him and said to him, Why are you sitting alone in this place, which is the shelter of the jinn? So the merchant told him what happened to him with that goblin, and because of his sitting in this place, so the sheikh who owned the gazelle was amazed and said, By God, my brother, your debt is nothing but a great debt, and your story is a strange story. If it were written with needles as far as the eye can see, it would be an example to those who consider it. Then he sat next to him and said, By God, brother, I will not leave you until I see what is happening to you with that goblin. Then he sat there talking to him, and that merchant fainted, and fear and panic came to him, and intense distress and more thought, and the owner of the gazelle was next to him, and then a second sheikh came to them, and with him were two black saluki dogs, so he asked them after greeting them about the reason for them sitting in this place. It was the shelter of the jinn, so they told him the story from beginning to end, but he did not settle for sitting there until a third sheikh came to them, carrying a starling mule. He greeted them and asked them about the reason for their sitting in this place, so they told him the story from beginning to end, and the repetition was of no use, and lo and behold, dust agitated. A great whirlwind came from the midst of that wilderness, and the dust was removed, and behold, that genie had a drawn sword in his hand, and his eyes were shooting with sparks. He came to them and pulled that merchant from among them, and said to him, Get up so that I can kill you just as you killed my son and my cowardice. So that merchant wailed and cried, and the three elders announced it with weeping, wailing, and wailing. The first sheikh, who was the owner of the gazelle, noticed them and kissed the hand of that demon and said to him, O genie and crown of the jinn kings, if I told you my story with this gazelle, and you saw that it was amazing, would you give me a third of this merchant's blood? He said, Yes, sheikh, if you tell me the story, and I find it strange, I will give you a third of his blood. That first sheikh said, No, O goblin, that this gazelle is my cousin, and of my own flesh and blood. I married her when she was young, and I lived with her for about thirty years, but I was not blessed with a child by her. So I took a concubine for myself, and I was blessed with a male child from her, as if he were the full moon. He appeared to have beautiful eyes, glazed eyebrows, and perfect limbs. He grew little by little until he was fifteen years old. Then a trip occurred to me to some city, so I travelled with a large store. My cousin, this gazelle, had learned magic and fortune-telling from a young age, so she bewitched that boy, and she bewitched a calf. The maid gave him two cows, and handed them over to the shepherd. Then I came after a long period of travel and asked about my son and his mother. She said to me, your maid died, and your son ran away, and I do not know where he went. So I sat for a year with a sad heart and crying eyes, 
until the feast of the sacrifice came, so I sent to the shepherd to give me a fat cow, and he brought me a fat cow, which was my concubine, who had been bewitched by that deer, so I rolled up my clothes, took the knife in my hand, and prepared to slaughter her. She screamed and cried intensely, so I got up from her and ordered that. The shepherd slaughtered and skinned it, so he slaughtered and skinned it, but found no fat or meat in it other than skin and bones. So I regretted slaughtering it, as regret is of no use to me, and I gave it to the shepherd and said to him, bring me a fat calf. My enchanted son brought a calf to me, and when that calf saw me, he cut his rope, and came to me and rolled over me, and howled and cried, so I felt compassion for him, and I said to the shepherd, bring me a cow and leave this one. When the morning came, Scarazade stopped talking about permissible words, and her sister said to her, how good, sweet, delicious, and sweet your conversation is. She said to her, where is this in what I will tell you on the coming night, if I live and the king keeps me? The king said to himself, by God, I will not kill her until I hear the rest of her speech. Then they spent the night embracing each other until the morning, so the king went out to his place of government, and the minister appeared with the shroud under his armpit. Then the king ruled and ruled and dismissed him until the end of the day, and he did not tell the minister anything about that. The minister was extremely astonished, then the court closed, and King Shariah entered his palace.